I am Dr. Amy Krambeck, and I am professor of urology at Northwestern Medicine. I specialize in kidney stone disease as well as BPH therapies. Stone disease during pregnancy is relatively uncommon. It occurs in approximately one in every 200 births. However, it is the number one non-obstetric reason for admission uh, during pregnancy. Clinically, it's difficult to diagnose kidney stones during pregnancy because many women have signs and symptoms of kidney stones normally. Uh, when they're pregnant, they can have nausea and vomiting. It's very common. They can have back pain related to the growing fetus, and they can have microscopic hematuria due to hormonal changes and rupturing of the pyramidal veins in the kidney. So normally when we want to diagnose a kidney stone, we say, well, they have back pain, they have nausea, vomiting, they have microscopic hematuria, it must be a stone. But in pregnancy, that may not be the case. The first line imaging study for the diagnosis of stones during pregnancy is ultrasound. I prefer a renal bladder ultrasound with transvaginal views. And what I'm looking for is hydronephrosis. Hydronephrosis is common during pregnancy, but it's uncommon on the left side, and it's uncommon below the iliac brim. So those would be abnormal findings on the ultrasound. You may see a stone, but that is rarely the case. You're often looking for obstruction by lack of a ureteral jet on the transvaginal views. You should use a standard transabdominal probe to assess the kidney and bladder. You should also use a transvaginal probe to assess the bladder and distal ureter. And when you use the transvaginal probe, the patient should be adequately hydrated, and you should observe the bladder for approximately 15 minutes. If there is lack of a ureteral jet, then you know that the ureter is obstructed, and that is most likely the source of the patient's pain. A CT scan should be performed during pregnancy if you have obtained an ultrasound but the results are not consistent with the clinical picture. So either the ultrasound is equivocal or it is a normal ultrasound, but the patient continues to still have pain, nausea, vomiting, and hematuria, making you concerned for a stone. The American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology states that a pregnant female can have up to 50 millisieverts of radiation exposure during the pregnancy before ill effects can occur. Most non-contrast CT scans of the abdomen and pelvis are around 8 to 10 millisieverts, and with low-dose protocols, they're even lower. MRI has a limited role in the diagnosis of stones during pregnancy. It can be used to find secondary signs of obstruction, such as stranding around the kidney or dilation of the kidney. Stones themselves will not show up as a solid substance, but they will show up as a filling defect inside the kidney. Most people will use an MRI to diagnose stones during pregnancy in the first trimester, um, but it's difficult to utilize later on because it is a time-intensive study and it's hard for a very pregnant woman to lay still for that long to undergo an MRI. So once a stone is diagnosed during pregnancy, management often depends on the size of the stone, the location of the stone, and the symptoms that the patient is having. If the patient is asymptomatic and the stone is located in the kidney, then you would serially monitor this stone with ultrasound during pregnancy and plan for treatment afterwards. If the stone is in the ureter and it's small, then a trial of passage is appropriate if the patient does not have signs and symptoms of infection or severe pain. There are multiple treatment options that can be considered. Uh, first and foremost is conservative management. Control the patient's pain, keep them hydrated, and give them a period of time to pass the stone. Generally, I will not wait over 48 hours if the patient is having significant pain and discomfort. If trial of passage fails, then you need to consider more aggressive intervention. Uh, you can place a ureteral stent or place a nephrostomy tube uh, to relieve the obstruction. However, studies have shown that pregnant women do very poor with nephrostomy tubes and stents, mainly because they're prone to incrustation. My preference is to perform ureteroscopic stone removal. Multiple studies and my own personal experience demonstrates that it's very safe during pregnancy. It can be performed quickly, even as an outpatient, 
and the woman can go home uh, with a limited stenting period and get on with her pregnancy and get away from the pain. You should not perform shockwave lithotripsy or percutaneous nephrolithotomy during pregnancy. Ureteroscopy during pregnancy has multiple advantages. Uh, it can be performed safely uh, with no increased risk of obstetric complications. Stones that form during pregnancy are often calcium phosphate, so they're readily broken with the laser and easy to extract. The ureters are dilated during pregnancy, so it's very easy to get the ureteroscope into the ureter. Oftentimes, ureteroscopy during pregnancy can be performed under a spinal, so there's minimal anesthetic risk. And postoperatively, I generally leave a stent in for only 48 to 72 hours. So minimal pain, minimal morbidity to the patient so that they can go on with their pregnancy and not have any ill side effects. There are several recent advancements in ureteroscopy that I think make it even more favorable during pregnancy. The introduction of the thulium laser fiber as well as the Moses uh, laser technology has vastly improved the ability to dust stones. So you can treat larger stones in shorter amounts of time and safely treat these stones. Uh, so I think your ureteroscopy is even safer than it has been and more effective than it has been in the past at treating larger stones or multiple stones.